Hello and welcome to this day in the life with my sourdough starter. Bright and early, the first thing I do in the morning is I actually come and I take it out of my refrigerator and I just stick my starter on the counter so that it can start to kind of warm up and start to get kind of more happy. The next thing I need to do is I need to feed my sourdough starter because I want to bake some bread with this later. So in order to feed my sourdough starter, I actually have to pull some of what's in there out. This is called discard. I'm going to use it in some other recipes. You can see I'm putting it into some separate bowls, but that's gonna give me some more space in my jar so that I can feed my sourdough starter and allow some room for it to expand because as as that starter eats the new flour, it is going to get very large. If you're curious about having a sourdough starter or feeding a sourdough starter or how to care for a sourdough starter, anything like that, there's a playlist on my channel that you can find where I have a bunch of videos from other YouTubers who have been baking with sourdough much longer than I have. And so I sort of compiled that playlist for myself. So I went ahead and I made it public so that if you are new to sourdough and you're curious about it and you also wanna get started with your own sourdough starter, that's a really great resource and a great place to begin. As you just saw, I was adding some flour and water into my starter jar. And then now I'm just stirring it all in. And there are a lot of people out there who are really concerned about exact ratios and measurements and how much flour and how much water and all of this, what temperature, this, that. Um, and that's not really how I do it. I just kind of go by look and feel. I just really like a more laid back approach to caring for my sourdough starter. It makes it sustainable. It makes it something that I can keep doing and it just works for me to do it that way. Now I'm gonna get started on the first recipe that I'm making this day, which is pancakes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my pan heating up. This is my cast iron griddle. I love it so much. On this particular day, I was using my sourdough discard with like a pre-done pancake batter that's just add water. At times when I have a lot of discard that needs to be used, I have a different recipe that I use to make pancakes just out of discard, but my kids don't like them as much, so I've been kind of splicing it where every time I make pancakes I put a little bit more sourdough starter into it just so I can get their tastes acclimated to it. That sourdough discard pancake recipe that I mentioned comes from a blog called Farmhouse on Boone and I will put the link to that in the description below. Like I said that's not the recipe I'm making right now but it is my favorite completely sourdough starter pancake recipe. What I did this time was I just took a couple of cups of the pancake waffle mix and threw that in with the starter that I was using, which was about a cup of starter, I believe. And then I just kind of eyeballed it and put in enough water to get the consistency that I usually look for in a pancake batter. Thank you so much for being here with me today, for spending your time with me. My name is Shay and I love cooking from scratch. I love fermented foods. I'm a holistic health coach and a busy mom of two toddlers. And I'm just really excited to be sharing this with you and I hope that you find some value in it. 
my kids just love pancakes and I find that it's one of the easiest and most reliable ways that I can use up sourdough discard. So usually on days that I'm making bread, we start out our morning with pancakes. And sometimes I also make waffles and I don't do anything different to the batter to make waffles. I, I know some people do, I don't really understand why I've never had a problem. Um, but you know, you do you. If you have a favorite waffle recipe, you know, share it below and bonus points if it's also a sourdough recipe. So generally on the days that we make pancakes, my kids will just kind of eat them, kind of graze on them throughout the morning as I'm making them. It's kind of funny, uh, they're pretty little, so I don't think they really get the whole pancake and syrup thing, which is cool, I'm, I'm down to not have to put syrup all over their pancakes, that's fine. They just kind of take a pancake and, you know, munch on it. And then usually I'll make like eggs or something like that as sort of like second breakfast, just so they have some protein and fat. Is any pancakes that are left over, we actually will use those to make like sandwiches for lunchtime. We'll make little peanut butter sandwiches to take with us to the park or something. And then at the end of the day, any pancakes that are left over, usually I will actually just freeze them in a single layer. And then once they're frozen, I put them all into a bag and then they're really easy to just take out of the freezer and put into the toaster. You can see me starting on the second recipe that I am doing on this day. And it's a cracker recipe that I got off of the blog, um, what was it? Our Gabled Home, I believe. And I will leave that recipe below also. Anyway, earlier when I pulled out the discard, I was mistaken on the amount. And so I only pulled out half of the amount that the recipe called for. So you see me pulling out more out of my jar. And now that's sort of like fed starter at this point instead of discard. Discard is usually like an unfed starter that you pull out of your fridge. Um, and you'll see how that affects the crackers later because they did get quite thick and poofy. If you're enjoying this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. It really does help us small and uh, new YouTube channels. It helps us get picked up by the algorithm and it helps us get noticed by more people who might be looking for the information that we are sharing. Not only is making your own sourdough starter really easy, most often you can actually find somebody who has a sourdough starter who is willing to share with you who's willing to give you some. Like I mentioned before, there's always this process of discarding and feeding that's happening. And most people will use the discard in recipes rather than actually getting rid of it or throwing it out. However, people are pretty happy to share some of that abundance of sourdough starter with other people. Sourdough is so fun that what ends up happening is you get a starter and you start baking with it and the next thing you know like you're a total sourdough nerd and all you think about is sourdough and you start wondering what other recipes you can turn into sourdough and you just want to try them all it's time for that cracker dough to just rest in the refrigerator for a little while it said 30 minutes to two hours so i went ahead and stuck that in there and started on my bread. And I am using a scale to measure out the ingredients. I am doing another recipe from the Farmhouse on Boone blog. She has a wonderful no need sourdough bread recipe. Now, I will say that I, I'm measuring the ingredients, but I am still going by feel for the most part when it comes to mixing it. So I measure out the entire amount of water that the recipe calls for, but I actually add the water in on the slower side 
because I don't want the dough to be too moist. It is supposed to be a little bit more of a moist dough if I'm understanding this correctly, but I don't want it to be so moist that I can't work with it. So just do your best and you know, if you're new to baking and you're new to baking bread, just know that there's a little bit of a learning curve and there's some trial and error that happens because there's only so much you can learn from watching videos or reading books. You actually have to like get your hands on the dough and like mix the ingredients and like feel what it feels like, um, you know, to, to actually work that dough between your hands and between your fingers. And over time, you sort of build up this experiential knowledge around baking and around dough. And, you know, it's like when I think back to the first sourdough starter that I had and how rigid I was with it versus now how relaxed I am about it, it just... It, it kind of blows my mind because at first it can seem so overwhelming and it can just seem so complicated and unapproachable. And I find that it seems that people feel that way about most from scratch cooking, that it just seems too overwhelming and it seems too complicated and it seems too time consuming and all of these things. And that's a big part of why I decided to create this channel because I'm not somebody who lives on a farm or a homestead or um, in some rural area or something like that. Yes, I am a stay at home mom. So that does give me a different schedule to work with as far as making food, but it doesn't mean that I'm necessarily less busy than any other mom. I have a small kitchen. I have this little kitchen and I just use it to the fullest that, it, that I possibly can because that's where my priorities lie. I want to feed my family good quality, healthy food. I love to cook from scratch. I've always loved to cook from scratch. That was one of my favorite things growing up was cooking. And as an adult, I have found so much joy in experimenting in the kitchen and in trying to take all of my favorite unhealthy foods and trying to turn them into like a healthier version. And now that this bread dough has come together, I'm just going to cover it with a piece of uh, plastic but you could use like a damp cloth there's a few different things you can use and I'm just gonna set it aside and then I'm gonna begin the stretching and folding process so I'm gonna let it sit for like 30 minutes and then I'm gonna do what's called the first stretch and fold which you're gonna see here where I'm literally just pulling up the sides of the dough and I'm stretching it out and folding it over and then turning the bowl and then stretching the dough out and folding it over. And this is a process that seems to be used in no knead bread to sort of replace that kneading process. So this allows the gluten to develop, which is gonna give you like a really nice springy, you know, um, good textured bread and then if I am understanding correctly this process also gives you those signature big air pocket bubbles in the sourdough bread this process of stretching and folding happens at intervals over a period of hours so at first I'm doing them every 30 minutes and then I go down to doing them every 15 minutes and in between I'm going to go ahead and start on these crackers. I'm going to roll out this cracker dough. never made this recipe before. This was the first time I would made it. And like I said earlier in the video, I did end up putting some fed starter in and I'm not sure if that is what made them so poofy but I kind of think next time I make them that I will either make, 
I probably won't make half the amount of dough because that wasn't a very large amount of dough, but I will probably split that dough into two and try to roll them out much thinner. I thought I got them pretty darn thin, but they sure turned out kind of um, thick when I cooked them. I will say though that the flavor is good. I did not put the rosemary that the recipe calls for in them. I didn't have it. You know, I think that they turned out pretty good, pretty tasty. My daughter really liked them. My son didn't care for them. And my husband thought they were okay, but they're getting eaten. They're quite good with like some cheese. So I did slice up some cheese to have on them. I've had a few sourdough starters in my life. The first one, I captured the yeasts on my own. I made my own sourdough starter. It's a bit more of a time commitment. It's a bit more of a process and it takes a little while to get a really healthy, robust starter. So, you know, if you're like me and you like to know that whole process, that can be a really, really fun and rewarding experience. But if you just really want to get baking, you might be better off finding somebody who has some starter to share. You can buy starter online and it usually will come to you in a dehydrated form. But like I said, usually people who have sourdough starter are more than willing to share. When I was looking for my most recent starter I have, the one I'm baking with now, I actually just posted in one of my local buy nothing groups. Somebody in my neighborhood who also has a sourdough starter was just willing to share it with me. She was like, sure. And she just gave me a small amount. It's like a quarter of a cup. And then you just feed it. And every time you feed it, it doubles. So that's the other reason why you're constantly taking out discard because every time you feed it, it should be doubling. And that can start to use a lot of flour over time, depending on how often you're baking with it and how big your family is though, you can really customize that. And there's been times in my life where I've kept a very small amount in just a very small mason jar. And then there's times in my life like right now where I have this much larger jar the jar that I use now, I really like because I can fit my measuring cups down into it, which is important to me. I used to use a mason jar, as I said, but my biggest issue was not being able to get my measuring cups into it. I know a lot of people just will pour their starter into measuring cups or straight into their recipe, but... I just don't really love that buildup on the side of my jar. It just kind of bugs me. So, and I find it to be really difficult to then clean the inner rims of those jars. Anyway, so I like something that has just a very smooth side most of the way up and that I can fit my entire hand and a measuring cup into with some amount of ease. If you have like a pizza cutter or something like that, that might work better for this process, but what I had was this huge knife. So that's what I'm using. Just cutting out little cracker size squares. And it was interesting to me because when I was doing this part of the process, after I made the first few cuts, I could already see some of those little squares like trying to rise. And I was like, no, trying to get them, like trying to get these holes poked as fast as I could so I could get them into the oven before they were rising too much because just the temperature change from being in the refrigerator to being out on the counter was already waking all of the yeast up and making them want to start eating all of the flour that was in the dough. So... I really think that next time when I do the recipe, I'll use actual discard and see if the recipe turns out any different or if I still get really big poofy crackers. This recipe was a lot of fun to make though, and I think it would be a really fun one to make with my kids. So I think next time I make it, I'll be getting them involved. Um, sometimes when it's my first run through a recipe, I kind of want to do it by myself and not have all of those little helping hands, 
but I do love to have my kids in the kitchen getting their hands in the food and starting to get familiar with the ingredients and what they're for and how we use them. I think it's one of my favorite parts of being a mother is teaching my children real life skills and in my opinion cooking and knowing how to cook and knowing how to cook healthy food from scratch I think that is one of the most important and often overlooked life skills so it is one that I definitely put an emphasis on and I just love getting in the kitchen with my kids and cooking I didn't record all of the stretch and folds because I thought that would get really, really repetitive, but I did record the, f the first couple and then maybe the last one, something like that. But this one in particular, I think was the second one. And what I noticed was after the dough sitting for, um, for all of that time is that it was quite a bit too sticky and I was having a really hard time doing any stretch and fold. So I did add a little bit of flour to it. And then as you can see, it kind of became much more of a ball and then didn't um, really want to stretch and fold quite as easily. So I did have to do a lot more of like, kind of like bouncing or sort of shaking the dough. And that is perfectly acceptable when you're doing your stretch and folds it because you really want to make sure that you're stretching it. That's the point. You really want to be developing that gluten. Most cultures around the world have some sort of fermented food as a regular part of their diet. And one of the reasons why this is so beneficial is that there's so many good things for your gut bacteria that is within fermented foods. And sourdough is a type of fermented food. It's a fermented wheat. And the fermentation process, when the yeast and the bacteria and the cultures that are inside of the sourdough starter, when they eat that the fresh flour that you're putting in there or the new flour that you're putting in there and that you're feeding it, it's really doing this like first breakdown of that stuff and it's making it so that the nutrients in those things are more available and also more digestible. So even some people who have sensitivities to gluten, not necessarily somebody who has like celiac, but somebody who just has like some gluten sensitivities, oftentimes will find that they can eat sourdough bread. Part of the reason for this is because of that fermentation process where the wheat is being broken down in that way. The fermentation process was also a really important part of the storage and preservation of fresh vegetables and fruits. So what you see me doing now is I actually pulled my starter back out of the fridge because I got a message from a friend of mine. She saw a picture of one of my uh, sourdough loaves of bread on social media and she reached out to me and was like, how do I, how do I get a starter? What do I do? And so I'm actually dehydrating some of my starter, which I'm just putting a very thin layer of it onto this piece of parchment paper. And then I'm just going to let it sit out and I'm just gonna let it dry at room temperature. And then I'm gonna break it all up and I'm gonna put about half of it into a jar to keep for myself as just sort of a backup in case something were to happen to my starter. And then the other half I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna send to my friend. And then when she gets it, she'll be able to just take that dehydrated starter and put it into some flour and water and that will rehydrate it, rehydrate all of the good cultures and yeast and bacteria in it and then they will start eating the flour that she feeds it and she'll be able to start baking her own sourdough goods as well so I'm really excited to be able to share that with her I'm always excited to share sourdough with people or share fermented foods with people because I really love fermented foods lots of different fermented foods. I love to make my own sauerkraut and I love kombucha and I used to do water kefir and maybe I will again in the future for my kids. I'm just getting another round of these stretch and folds in. I think in total I did about six rounds of the stretch and folds. 
have a favorite sourdough recipe or a go-to sourdough bread recipe? If so, please feel free to share it below because I'm always looking for new recipes to try. I don't have a stand mixer. I'm sure you noticed I've been mixing everything by hand. So I kind of like these no need type recipes, kind of, you know, just save myself a little bit of time and a little bit of effort. Although sometimes I think kneading dough by hand is just the right medicine depending on what mood I'm in. <laughs> so I'm just covering that and setting it aside once more. I decided to take this shot where you can kind of see the difference in thickness. Some of the pieces that were in the middle got quite thick and um, poofy and the parts that were out on the outer edges got quite dark and crispy. I think I would have taken those out a little sooner. After that last round of stretch and folds, I'm just letting my dough sit at room temperature and allowing it to rise. And while I'm giving that dough time to do what's called the bulk ferment, I'm just gonna go ahead and put all these crackers away and I'm just gonna store them in an airtight um, glass, little glass snapware container, but really any airtight container should work just fine. I find that making a little bit of time to pre-make some of these snacky food type things ahead of time just to have on hand for the week really makes a difference when it comes to snack times for my kids. It's only been a couple of hours at this point, but you can see that dough is already rising. So the next thing I did, which is unrelated to sourdough, is I just got some bean soaking for my dinner tomorrow. I am making, um, I'm making some beans with the leftover ham bone from Christmas dinner. If you're interested in seeing how I do that and sort of a meal that I'm going to use this bread that I'm making for, you'll want to check out that video as well. That is the video where I talk about how I'm actually going to bake this sourdough bread without a Dutch oven. If that video is out, I will leave the link in the description box below. And I'm just trying to be really careful with this dough as I'm kind of trying to lift it out of the bowl without deflating it too much. If you have any tips to share below um, for a better way to do that, I would love to hear them. I'm, like I said, I am not the most expert at baking sourdough bread, but I do bake sourdough bread and I think it tastes pretty good and my family likes it too. But I would say that shaping the bread is something I am still really working on and something I'm still really learning how to do. I used to bake sourdough bread just in a bread pan when I when I had my sourdough starters before. This is the first time that I've actually started branching out into making these more artisan type loaves and I find it to be a really fun process and it makes me really excited about it. I am sure everybody in my life is getting really sick of me talking about nothing but sourdough. Another good reason why I made this video because this is how obsessed with sourdough I am right now is I literally can't stop thinking about it to the point where I decided I'm going to record the whole process and then I'm going to talk about it to the world or at least the three people who might be watching these videos on YouTube. Hi Johnny. I shaped the loaf as best I could and then I let it sit on the counter for like 20 minutes or so. Lisa from the blog Farmhouse on Boone recommends doing that to sort of allow a skin to develop on the outside of the loaf so that when I put it into this bowl with the, um, with the cloth to rise, it won't stick to the tea towel when I go to take it out and bake it tomorrow. So it's been the 20 minutes or so I went and put my kids down for bed and then came back to it and now I'm just pinching the bottom. This is all part of the process of 
sh of shaping the dough so that it will spring up well when you bake it the next day. Once this process is complete, the next step is going to be to put the loaf in the fridge for the second sort of rise and that is going to allow a more slow fermentation process. And there's also all sorts of really cool information about why it works, but it tends to give a much better rise to your loaf when you do it this way and it makes it easier to score the top of the loaf and both of those things are going to help it have a really good rise when you bake it. And I'm putting the loaf in here with the seam side where I was pinching those seams together. I'm putting it with that side up because the side that is actually touching the cloth, that is going to end up being the top of my loaf. And as you can see here, this is how the loaf turned out the next day. If you wanna see how I baked this beautiful loaf of sourdough bread without using a Dutch oven, you'll wanna check that video out as well. And also if you are interested in that ham bone and bean soup. Thank you so much for joining me for this day in the life with my sourdough starter. I hope that you'll join me for future videos too.